welcome to another edition of Wisda Keep em Wednesdays with me, Keepa Chitan. Coming to you here from Santa Barbara at Arroyo Boro Beach. I want to pass on some messages from the generations. I was speaking in the last video about the adolescence. I feel that it's important to go through the different wisdoms that the different generations have. And the next one I want to speak of is the innocence of youth, the children, the young ones, the wee ones, as I like to call them. Uh, they have so much, so, so much to teach us if we choose to listen. And a lot of us do. A little history about myself. I worked with children for 38 years in various different settings. And I've worked with just about every age from birth to death, basically. One of the favorite ages for me to work with was the children of school age, you know, and younger, especially the like preschool age, the ones that haven't really started school, the ones that haven't really had to open a book yet and prove what they know. <laughs> children have an innocence and they are here to teach us that. We all come in with this innocence. Some of us keep that innocence and some of us let it go for a while. And when we're around children, we're reminded of that innocence. We're reminded of that zest for life, for that play that is so important, so, so important. And for that, how do you say? knowing that when they came to this earth they brought something with them and they still remember it they sat in the universe they sat with source they sat with the angels they sat with all these different beings and they were giving given all this information and all this love and all this joy and all this bliss and when they came to embody a little baby, tiny little meat suit. <laughs> they brought it with them and they remember it. And it comes out occasionally. And sometimes as adults, we look at them and go, where did that come from? Or, oh my gosh, I wish I, I could have that. You know, so many different things come go through your mind when you're with a child. And I think because they're in this state, especially a baby, like a newborn before they're a toddler, they're quote unquote helpless. So we're watching them constantly, you know, making sure they're not in danger and trying to teach them along the way all the time. They're teaching us in every moment that they have, you know, they, rely on us for food they rely on us for shelter they rely on us for protection they rely on us for clothing and warmth and love and all that and I think that the fact that they rely on us is how they're teaching us to love and to keep them warm and to keep them sheltered and to keep them protected because we see them as something precious, which they are. And in turn, they're teaching us the preciousness that we have within ourselves. Should we be paying attention? You know, they have different ways of showing us. When they become toddlers, they start communicating and they start showing us in different ways. They're able to say, I love you. They're able to hug us. They're a little bit more independent and they want to show us that there's so much to see and do in the world. They want to see and do everything. They will sacrifice their rest <laughs> to do so. They will fight and fight so that they can go and see and do things. They'd rather be doing anything else but sitting. They'd rather do, be doing anything else but, you know, sometimes eating, 
You know, they want to go on adventures. They want to see what that is. What is that? What is that thing that's so marvelous? You know, sometimes it's a rock. <laughs> the relationship between kids and rocks is amazing, you know. And it, should you ever receive a gift from a child in the form of a rock, treasure that. Because at that moment, that is all they have for you. You know, besides love, they, they don't know what else to give you. And to them, that is so precious. They see something so much more in that rock than we see. And we just see it as a rock, this useless thing. What am I going to do with this? And they want to collect as many of them as they can. <laughs> it might be something else. It might be sticks. It might be, it's usually something of nature because they are so connected to nature as we should be. As we are, we are connected to nature and they're there to remind us, you know, get out in nature more. I mean, I'm here, I got these rocks, I'm sitting in the sand, I was sitting on the log. I have all the elements. I can touch them, except for the fire. You know, the fire's up in the sky. <laughs> but I have the water, I have the earth, I have the air, I have the sun. All those elements are here. And they want us to know that. They want us to touch that. They want us to feel that. They want us to be connected to that because they still remember. And every day they want to connect with that in some way or another. And by them bringing you a rock, they're saying, hey, remember where you are. Remember this place that we live. Remember that joy and innocence that you once had when you brought a rock to somebody and you thought it was the most fascinating thing ever, <laughs> you know? And so get back to that. Let yourself be that innocent child who still remembers everything from source, from the universe. <sighs> a little bit shorter than usual. And I think I'm going to end it there. I've been seeing seagulls every time I <laughs> am about ready to end. So I think I will end there. Thank you once again for joining me. I will be here every Wednesday, passing on wisdom in one form or another. Got lots of rocks to give you. <laughs> Love and light always and always.